Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, the professor, and I'm here to tell everybody about cybersecurity, of course. It's been a while. Sorry, I took a long break. We're back. Let's get you up to speed. Uh, once again, I teach for the University of Hawaii, Kapi Yolani Community College. I teach network security and ethical hacking. And I'm here to try to educate the public on cybersecurity. That's a broad term, but we're going to cover a wide swath of the descriptions uh, of cybersecurity today. First of all, we're going to start out with some local events. I have with me the State Cybersecurity Coordinator, Reynold Fiocchi. Welcome, sir. Hey, thanks for having me back, Dave. And what are you doing? What's up today? So today uh, we want to talk about Girls Go Cyber Start. Okay. Describe so, this. So first of all, I just want to talk about what about cybersecurity, right? So why okay. cybersecurity? Before we move into that. So if uh, first slide. Are you going to put up the first slide right now? Yes. Okay. So as you probably know, uh, just some background for a lot of people. So why cybersecurity? So short of the, uh, the events that are occurring out there, those incidents and those breaches, uh, just wanted to give uh, our students really some background as well as their parents. So really, uh, there's an organization called ISC Squared. It is the largest international cybersecurity professional association. And they did a, a survey uh, back in uh, 2017. And just wanted to highlight three things. Uh, if you look at the top right of the, uh, the sheet on the screen, uh, in 2022, they expect to have 265,000 cybersecurity jobs that we will be not able to fill as a nation. So Those that's 265,000 gaps. Yeah, it's a gap. Not okay. the number of jobs, but the number of jobs after we fill all the jobs that will be left that we cannot fill. Unfilled jobs Unfilled waiting jobs. to be filled. So uh, very high demand. Uh, Next, uh, on the bottom, towards the left there, there's a red uh, rectangle. Uh, the cybersecurity professionals that were surveyed, 81% uh, said that they are somewhat satisfied to very satisfied with their jobs. So that's a very high satisfaction. And the last one we all want to wait for is how much does a cybersecurity professional make? And back in 2017, the average cybersecurity professional made $124,000 a year. That's a pretty good average when you're considering uh, the wide swath, again, of all the cities in America where mm -hmm. you can employ cybersecurity professionals from Shreveport, Louisiana to Silicon Valley. So in the, in the middle there, 124000 But that means in Silicon Valley, you're looking at a much larger paycheck. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So this is, this is actually an average throughout the nation, right? Wow. So, uh, Hawaii probably may not be that as an average, but uh, uh, Hawaii uh, cyber professionals do very well here. We have the paradise tag. Right? Yeah, Everybody says, you live here, you're, you're grateful, so we're going to give you 30% less. Yep. And we all deal with it. Yeah. Right. So uh, Next slide. So why am I here? So okay. that's, that's really the background for our, our uh, young people in high school as well as their parents. Why cybersecurity? So that's the reason. But I wanted to talk really about a program called Girls Go Cyber Start. Okay. So next slide. So really, this program is designed to empower our young women in high school to become cybersecurity professionals. Okay. And hopefully uh, help with everyone else uh, to protect the web and everything online. So you're getting them in the ninth grade and moving them. Yeah. So this program yeah. is 9 through 12. Okay. Uh, it's, it's known that in the cybersecurity profession, uh, women make a very small portion from a representation perspective, right? They're about 10% plus or minus. And so this idea is to bring those uh, young women and add them to the profession. Uh, it's such a great profession to be in. That's a great idea for a couple of reasons. Uh, the, the first I can think of is when it comes to cybersecurity, the more minds that think about a problem, the better, because you're coming at it from so many different angles. And if you're just coming at it from the angle of the nerdy guys, you got like it. me, <laughs> you're only getting that, that certain perspective, whereas if you add women to the mix, you're gaining a lot of knowledge and perspective yep. that you might miss. And as you know, in, in a cybersecurity career uh, field, uh, sharing, working as a group, team mm -hmm. efforts is, is huge. And uh, you know, ten, men tend to not do that as well, I think, as, as women. So I think no, they do. They, they work better as teams. And it's the hive mentality that keeps you safe. You can't have one or two people in a company mm -hmm. doing this job. You've got to train everybody. Yeah. It's got to be on the front line, yeah. Yep. So, uh, Back to Girls Go Cyber Start. So Girls Go Cyber Start is a program that uh, Alan Paller from Sands Institute uh, started about a year and a half ago. And uh, what it is really is, uh, it's really taking cybersecurity and making it a game, web-based, and asking our young uh, adults to kind of play with it. And 
as they do this, they'll start learning different uh, cybersecurity principles, you know, encryption, uh, web vulnerabilities, maybe do some uh, Python programming, learning some Linux uh, commands. But they'll actually go through the program and actually learn a lot of these things, not really necessarily realizing they're learning things. Now, these things are uh, many challenges you go yes. through. You have to do problem solving so activities. As you go through it, uh, you go from one to another to another, and it just builds upon itself until you get, you get really knowledgeable in a lot of these areas. You increase your skill set as you move yes. through. Yeah. That's, uh, I think that's the biggest uh, skill set that we need in IT in general, not just cybersecurity, is the problem solving, the critical thinking aspect. And I think uh, many of our high school students come out challenged in that area. Yeah. And I did, especially, yeah. you know, I teach community college. It's one of the areas we try to promote. Yeah, so this, this actually goes into, uh, it's really based on, you know, self-learning as a group kind of thing. So there's discussions, you, if you go through the website, there's an advisor. But the advisor is really the person, the adult at the high school, kind of getting the word to the uh, students and really uh, vetting the, the students as a student of a, of a high school. So we don't have, you know, old people kind of trying to jump in and uh, kind of be you know, young women kind of thing. So it's really the, the, the girls actually kind of do it on their own. So it's, that's what that's all about. Uh, with adult, adult supervision? With adult, not really supervision in the sense that uh, uh, they can do it at home, but they do have an adult that has to be the interface with SANS Institute. Well, that's good. Let's go to the next slide. So I talked about what it, what it is. Uh, in Girls Go CyberStar, there's actually uh, three phases that you go through. And really, anyone, uh, any young woman in high school, 9 through 12, uh, they have to be at least 13 years old. Uh, just a caveat there. So if, if it's a high-performing young person, they, they will not be, even if they're not, they're not 13, if that ever happened. Uh, real quick, this is the second year we're doing this. Uh, 329 uh, students participated last year, and Hawaii did extremely well as, as, uh, as teams at, uh, at a national level. So last year, we, there were 17 states that participated. Uh, and this year, uh, the projection is 27 states that will participate, and over, over 20,000 uh, uh, girls, we think, are going to sign up. 20,000 girls in high school nationwide. Yeah. Nation. That's the way to prime the pump. Yeah. So we have, it hasn't started yet. Uh, right now, it's kind of the sign-up phase. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide. So what I want to talk about right now is, so what do you need to know, what do you need to, what, what is the experience level? And uh, for SANS Institute, and we saw this last year, uh, you really don't need to know anything. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a, a computer programmer or someone that does Python or have a Linux uh, box at home, any of that. You come as is. A lot of it is self-learning, so you have to be, as, as the team, you guys will, you know, encourage. Uh, collaborate and move forward. So really, you're, it's one, solve, one problem solved after another, and you just keep on building. Uh, a, a really quick note is uh, last year, uh, you would think schools that maybe have a Cyber Patriot team or did Gen Cyber or Hacker High School, these programs out there, uh, would, would, would do very well. Uh, but interestingly, Kalani High School took first place. Kalani High School? Okay, right by Kahala. Yep, and, and, and Kalani High School does not have a Cyber Patriot team. Uh, they have a pretty high-speed uh, math teacher, uh, Dr. Uh, Mike Ida, who uh, led his, uh, his team, and they took first place. And they took 10th nationally. Wow, which is, 10th which is nationally. Kalani High School. Good for yeah. you guys. So right. Again, they, they didn't have, I, mean, I think maybe they had computer uh, science, but short of that, uh, they did not have a, a, you know, a cyber-specific program. It sounds like all you really need is the ability to browse the web and be able so, to keep track of your login. At, so the first part is web-based. Yep. Uh, the second part, as you go deeper in, uh, you're going to have to bring up a, uh, a VM. A virtual so, machine. A virtual machine. Mm. So you're going to have to have something that runs, I'm sure they're using VM player as part of that, and then you'll start doing some challenges in the, uh, on the image. And VM player is free to download and use. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep, no cost. Uh, no, no, but, these modules, uh, it sounds like they provide a little bit of knowledge, and then they have you solve a problem. So you're gaining knowledge, solving problems as you go. Yeah, and in addition to that, in the, in the, in the game, uh, there are resources that they have built. Uh, so there's actually uh, toolkits that, uh, I won't say toolkits, but resources where it'll, it'll explain things as they go along. So they're just not code in there. And of course, uh, a lot of it also is done on the web as you search and solve the problems. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. 
So just wanted to emphasize, uh, we're kind of on a time crunch. Uh, uh, we, ha we already have about 300 uh, students that have signed up as of, as of last week. I'm not what sure it is today, but uh, to participate, you have to go through the assess phase, which is the first phase. And what that means is you need to go to the website, which I'll show later, and sign up and just do a couple problems just to, to see if you're interested. It's really an interest check. Once you do the assess phase, you'll get an invitation to do uh, the game phase. Does and it put people into groups based on their ability level, or you, everyone starts you, at the same you, level? You pick your teammates. Uh, so the girls will come together as a group and be a team. Uh, they'll grab their advisor, and they'll move forward. All online? All online. OK. Yeah. But if someone wants to be a team member, and you want to sit right next to them physically, oh, not that's sorry. OK, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can, you can play online. You can play next to each other. You can go headsets, however you want to do it. Wow, that's a lot of so range. You, okay. you don't have to meet any place. And in today's world, you know, we're all remotely distributed kind of. So it's, you know, I, I don't think they're going to be. Actually, some have told me that they played together and others were online last year. OK. Uh, so next slide. So I talked about the assess phase, which was the last slide. Once you do that, and the deadline is April 12th to complete that, uh, you'll get an invitation, and you'll be asked if you want to do the game. So the game is really the, what we're talking about. It's, it's hundreds of challenges, if you, uh, if you can do all of them. Uh, there's a moon base you're trying to get to, uh, Earth base. You are a cyber protection officer, and you're trying to protect the world. And you're, you're now searching, uh, you know, doing all those different things, but specifically you're tracking the, uh, the trail of cyber criminals and trying to take them down. And you take them down little by little as you move forward in the game. Uh, let's see. So that one is actually goes from April 22nd to June 28th. Oh, so you get a little it, while. It's this a long time. A weekend. Yeah, yeah. Last, okay. last year was actually two weeks. <clears throat> and they designed it specifically so it kind of ended towards the end of the school year. And they, they think a lot of the AP computer science uh, students will be playing this, so they'll have, they'll have some time at the end of the year. And traditionally, there's, there's kind of a downtime right before they graduate. A uh, little caveat, I didn't put it on this, but there's actually also a capture the flag event uh, from, uh, was it June 5th to 7th? So the high-performing teams in the state and different schools will be asked if they want to do a capture the flag, and that'll be the national level capture the flag. So another good event coming up. I wanted to mention in the, uh, in the game, there are cash prizes for the, the students as well as their school. So, uh, uh, and also scholarships for the kids. Last year, uh, Sacred Hearts Academy uh, got $2,000 uh, as a cash prize for the school based on the uh, performance of their students. And what are the scholarships like? So in this one, the scholarships uh, are $500 scholarships for college. And mm -hmm. every state uh, will get at least 10 scholarships. Well, that's great. That so can pay, pay for your books. That'll pay for something. Yeah, so that's, that's everything that's offsets up. the cost. That adds up, yeah. So let's see. Uh, with that, let's go to the next slide. So how do you go about doing this, right? So uh, if you want to participate, here it is right there. Go to the website, girlsgocyberstart.org. There's two things on that website. It'll, it'll ask you if you want to register. Go ahead and do that. On the bottom, it'll ask you if you want to try some examples. And there's a, a website designed specifically with some examples that you can try out. Just test drive. Yeah. Let's leave that up for the, the last minute here. <coughs> we want to we keep those, those websites up for people to look at. And uh, what about the last 30 seconds before our break? Uh, anything else you want to promo? Uh, well, uh, a couple of things. If you on that slide right now, uh, we also stood up a Instagram. So uh, Cyberstart HI, Cyberstart Hawaii. Uh, there's another program coming up. Maybe I'll show you, come by again next month. It's called okay. Cyber Fast Track. And that one is specific for our, high, uh, our college students. If you're a college student, doesn't matter what age, from regular age all the way to 80, 90, you can play that one. And there's some scholarships there, but the big prize in those are actually SANS Institute courses. Oh. They, you know, at $6,000 per course. Very expensive. And the, yeah. the grand prize on that side is basically three of those courses. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be sitting very good as a cyber person if you get that. Yeah. Good, good to know. And come back uh, next month and tell us about okay. this stuff. And thanks for being here. Appreciate you your time. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we've got to take a little break and come right back, everybody. 
in one minute, we'll start with drones and how we use them for physical security. So come back and join us. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <sighs> Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, if you skipped ahead, this is the second half of the show. We're changing topics now. We're going to physical security and a unique property of physical security. We're using drones this time. Drone technology, which also can, can it count as IoT? With me here is Percy Ellis, adjunct faculty at Kepiolani Community College, where I teach IT, and so does he, and Russ Langston from Aloha Ariel. Aloha Ariel. Aloha Ariel. Welcome, guys. Hey, good to have you. Thank so, you. Could, do you think this qualifies as Internet of Things? Absolutely. It can, it can claim an IP on a network? It can be network-based? Network sure. Yeah? It can have an IP address, and generally we don't have an IP address. We usually use Wi-Fi or a similar radio technology to communicate with the drones. Just direct from the controller to the drone, but nothing else connecting. Yeah, but we can stream live. To another device? Mm -hmm. Or to YouTube or Facebook. And then these things are getting incredibly advanced, and you guys are going to walk me through some of the uh, ways we can use this for physical security. And what, let's talk about physical security anyway. In cybersecurity, this is the one thing that people throw out the window. You know, all the network guys think, oh, how do we got this handle because we got a firewall? But then they forgot, you know, there's a six pin lock on the door and there's no alarm system and there's no fence and you know someone can walk into the parking lot and sure. piggyback through the back door and walk right up to you and tap you on the shoulder. The physical security is monumentally important and we usually forget about it. And there's all kinds of ways that you can use these drones to enhance your security posture. Now just a quick story, uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but uh, um, a certain person implemented an alarm system for his house remote because he's not always there. And our, our friend Andrew Lanning and Integrated Security Technologies Hawaii hooked up the alarm system for him, hooked up the remote camera so you can log in off island and see whatever's going on in the house. Mm -hmm. But in addition, if you can't find somebody on the camera but you know somebody's there, you can launch a drone. Oh, With the <laughs> <laughs> With your iPhone, you can launch the drone, zoom around the house, and harass who's ever in your yard. I thought, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, these are incredibly advanced. Walk me through what these are and why they're so advanced with the properties. What do you get with a unit like this? Let's point it towards the camera there. That's, you can see it. Kind of a Star Wars looking front there. And it's called the Enterprise. <laughs> this is yeah, that's the Enterprise um, version of the Mavic 2 Pro. And if you can start the first video, we can show you some of the infrared okay. properties. This has an infrared, what you call a FLIR camera. It's forward-looking infrared, and you can see a person on the ground in the infrared doing his full uh, Michael Jordan pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see how hard it is to pick them up without. Um, a spotlight on them. Oh, so there he is in the dark on the left. Right. And you can see him in the FLIR on the infrared. 
is using both cameras simultaneously and recording two separate files. And then you can send the dogs after them, you know, if, if, if there are <laughs> any problems. So the, the FLIR can be very helpful. It's an attack squirrel. It's an attack. It's actually my dog and I just playing around in there. So <laughs> That's great. These, the, uh, what a wonderful device. And, and it lasts how long in the air? How long can you keep it up? The battery life is anywhere between 17 minutes to half an hour. Mm -hmm. Depending on the conditions you're flying in, right, right, what and, you're and the, what power devices you're using, I sure. bet, because they all draw on the same source. Yeah, yeah, and some of these drones, that drone can be outfitted with a speaker to put on it. We were kind of like, why would you want that? But <laughs> let's say you're rescuing somebody on top of uh, you know Chinaman's hat or something, if you want to tell them to hold their hands up if they're okay, you can communicate them with them in that way and get some visual communication. To kind of plan how you're going to pull them down from there. That's remarkable. So safety mm -hmm. and security. Yeah. That's great. What else can we do with these things? Okay, what was our second graphic? Can we pull that up? Um, I think we were talking about, oh, here we go, um, stockpiles. When you hear the term stockpiles, you think it's a figurative thing, like I've got a lot of spam, stockpile of spam, but there's actually companies that have product and stockpiles out uh, where it's relatively insecure. So this is out in a... Um, the quarry or a field area where there's um, a lot of material as far as asphalt, gravel, and we can actually program drones to do what I call mowing the lawn. And so this is a demonstration of a drone that's flying this uh, path of taking overlapping images as it goes. And those images, because they're geo-catched and, and they're assigned certain GPS coordinates, can be stitched together there to form a two or three dimensional map that can be used not only to identify the surface area of product that's there, in this case gravel, that actually used to measure the volume of gravel on hand so they can look at sort of inventory security for having large operations. And, and we can use this in agricultural as well. That's amazing. I mean, stitching together a photo used to be something you do in Photoshop, and mm -hmm. it took you hours to right. get it just right. And this does it on the fly. It does. There's, there's a software that you use afterward that's a little bit proprietary. You need a lot of... Uh, of computing space to do it. If you're taking each of these images about 12 uh, megabytes and you stitch together, you know, two or, two or 300 of them, it's going to be a lot of computing power. A lot of processor yeah, power? Yeah. So you, you shouldn't do this on your 2004 laptop? No, that no, you've got no, a spare, not at all. This is a modern computing it's environment that modern. you need. And do you have to physically attach something like a USB cable to the device to download the data? You can, yes. yeah. yeah. You can is it also, faster that way, or it does it also have a Wi-Fi? Not to download it to your laptop. Oh, yeah. okay. You can download the it to your phone. Physical connection. Yeah. Oh, but your phone can. So that, that was the next thing I was going to ask. The controller doesn't have to be like the PS2 controller. You can do it from your phone. You can do it on an iPad, right? The, yeah. the software for the controller. Well, you, you still need the controller itself, but the, the iPad or, or the phone is your, your window, right? Yeah, and on Monday I'm going to get to see the new DJI controller, which is uh, built in. It's like a screen that's built into the controller, and it's for daylight, so you can see the images clearly during the day, and you don't have to break out your cell phone. Okay, what else can you do with these? Well, we have uh, I think another video. Yeah, let's see what that is. Let's see another video. Oh, okay, this I'll start this off about biosecurity, which is a security that people don't think about a lot, but in Hawaii we have a lot of uh, endemic species, that is species that are found here and nowhere else, and we know that one of the greatest threats to endemic species are non-native species, whether they're plants or animals, and so... Us. Us, yeah. <laughs> Pigs. Uh, yeah. In a lot of cases, like strawberry guava is an incredibly invasive plant here in Hawaii. I did not know that. And so, yeah. You can find great. them this way. You can find them this way. You can also find native plants this way. And using that sort of mapping technology we showed previously is a good way to map a certain forested area and maybe go back and identify what proportion is native and non-native. And then you can make a management plan. Say, I'm going to go through and, and, and cut these down. And because that drone can fly the exact same uh, path over time, you can have the exact same analysis done as snapshots through time. A little scary now that I know that you can use a drone to find my Pakalolo patch. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> right. But it's, it's good that you can also find people that, that are lost now. Um, I don't know about you guys. The I Civil live. Air Patrol would be a good application. So we have a Civil Air Patrol, but no helicopters in the Civil Air Patrol. It's all fixed wing. Huh. Right? Not know that. They don't have any rotary aircraft. So if you see a, a helicopter in a search and rescue, that's city or county or Coast Guard, mm. right, or the military. And we live right by the. Uh, the haiku stairs, oh, yeah. the stairway to heaven. That's a 3,000 foot climb. And uh, people quite often get stuck up there. 
and it'd be great to be able to find them without burning through 160 gallons of aerial fuel every in hour, a, yeah. every hour uh, in, a, in a Raider helicopter to send one of these little babies up there. Sure. What is the range? I think we have three miles. Mm -hmm. Three miles, so easily you can go up that high. Yeah. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah, and really great cameras. What is the, uh, the optical resolution of these cameras? I have what's called the Hasselblad or Hasselblad camera, and it has a one-inch CMOS sensor on it, and it's 4K resolution. 4K. So this is like the TVs you buy from Costco, right. the big 80-inch screen. So if you took imagery and put it on that big screen, it's not going to get pixelated or blurry. No, not at all. You know, a nice, clear image, right? So you don't want to take uh, images of your wife before she puts her makeup on. It's not, no comment. Not, no comment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about these things. Now, first of all, the cost. What's the entry You'll to get in here? That. Okay. So for the inner, the Mavic Two, which is this one with the Hasselblad mm -hmm. camera, we're talking twelve fifty currently. Twelve hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's really affordable. Does that come with a case that folds up into and the extra battery and the controller? Yes, and you can get the Fly More pack with. Three additional batteries and a couple of other features that'll give you more time. What is the educational level like? Uh, like I, I've never flown a drone before. It's a lot easier now than it used to be. I think the first time I was interested in, it, I said, "Well, I'll go get the remote, remote control helicopter," and I came in with a couple thousand to drop down. And the lady said, "Try to fly this little one," and I just bam. She's like, I'm, "I will not sell this to you." Um, and so I've now, done the same thing with yeah. a couple of drones. I just like ran into a wall, and now they sit on a shelf. Because, yeah, but these are easier, right? I know the, the first not one you had first, first you let yeah. me fly, yeah. and it had sensors where you, you couldn't go forward into a pole. Unfortunately, I reversed into a right, pole. Yeah, but we've all done the same. Yeah. <laughs> these have omnidirectional sensors. But these are the sensors around the sides mm -hmm. that we see here. You can exactly. see these sensors in the back. And this is, a, this is a sensor up here, too? Yes, so as long as it's in tripod mode, and it the sensors shouldn't... Down below? Yeah, that. Wow. it shouldn't be able to fly into anything. Should not. Should not. Yeah. not. But you're not letting me fly this. <laughs> oh, I, I would have no hesitation yeah. to allow you to fly that. Uh, but you can get it replaced. So tell me about the replacement policy. This is a fantastic thing. So DJI has a care package that says if you can find the drone afterwards, after a crash, you can return it to them for a full replacement. And I did that with the drone that we flew. My God. So. I saw the video you mm -hmm. guys had. Do you have a dude you flew out to Chinaman's Hat? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'd love to see that one because you guys literally flew this across the ocean sure, from yeah. the mainland to a mini island called Chinaman's Hat. It's off the north coast out here in Oahu. And if you ditched it in salt water, okay, you're going to have to dive into the salt water, yeah. but you can get it replaced. I mean, that's fantastic. Was that a lot of money? No, I think it was uh, $60 for the... Um, drone that I had, which was a Spark, yeah. and it's a little bit more for these. But um, I, the Chinaman's Hat video was an example of the point of interest feature. So well, you just click a point of interest and it goes mm. out there. Yeah. That's fantastic. All these navigational features, this neat point of entry. It's easy to fly. It looks like it's economical, and it comes with a pretty good insurance policy that you can pick. And all these things make it easier for small and medium businesses mm -hmm. to to initiate something like this. We also, uh, I just did an audit for a refinery out here, and I thought, what a perfect application. Oh, absolutely. So you don't have to walk around and risk your life around a refinery. Mm -hmm. You can fly this little drone around mm -hmm. and not bother anybody. I think this is a, it, this is a perfect solution for uh, uh, physical security. Yeah. When you can't physically cover the amount of space, you can reduce your staff and increase your capacity for a reasonable price. Thanks for coming by, guys. Thank Anything you. you want to promo before we get out of here? Because we have about 30 seconds left. Well, we'd like to promote our business, Aloha Aerial Imaging, and we have a YouTube uh, page. And we're just a fledgling business, so mm -hmm. you can come out and see some of our first videos. We're going to be polishing up that site and possibly coming up with a more social media presence like Facebook and Twitter. There's a lot of business Instagram. applications. Yeah. I'd like to get you guys back in here sure. in a couple of months. Tell me what you've been doing with the business okay. community and all the applications, not just security. And let's Absolutely. do this again. Thanks for right. coming by. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Aloha. 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 Aloha, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, this week for Cyber Underground. And we'll be back with another really interesting episode, I promise, very soon. Until then, stay safe.